Thank you, Ellen. We are going to start by welcoming those who have gathered both in Zoom and here in the sanctuary. We welcome all of you to the Jackson Community Church, uh, regardless of how you have arrived. Some people who are with us are guests this week. Some people come as often as they can. For all the reasons that you have chosen to be with us, we welcome you, and we hope you will find what you need in this gathering. Announcements for the life of the church. One, we will be having a council meeting this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll be sending out the link. So if you're part of a team that re is represented on the council, we would really appreciate your attendance so we can have a quorum so we can actually make binding decisions if we need to. Also, I may have mentioned this. I'll probably mention it again in the ser service, but for the next couple of weeks, we're inviting people to bring water that's important to your life. We, you don't have to do it today. We're going to use it on Halloween because our youth will be helping in a baptismal ceremony, and they are studying along with all of us. We are all studying together the stories that lead us to the concept of baptism as, as it is practiced in our tradition. But for the two weeks leading up to that time, we're inviting people to contribute water to the baptismal water that will be used as the holy water on Halloween, ironically, for the baptismal ceremony that we're going to hold during the service. So I know that's an embodied thing, which means that if you're far away, like in Zoom, you may not be able to mail me your water or anything like that. But if you have places around here that water was special to you, you may hear those place names represented. If you want to send me your place name and I can go take a journey on your behalf to get some water from someplace or somebody else from the community can do so for you, so, you know, uh, send us your place names that are local to this area and we will share water with you. Otherwise, if you want to just send us your place names, we will include them in the way that we integrate our stories because water in the end is universal. It's all coming from the sky. It returns to the sky. It, it travels the cosmos. It travels the world. And so at some point or another, your water has touched our water. So water everywhere has a, a common binding element. But water, but, uh, just remember it. And if you can bring some a little bit in a Tupperware container, that will be lovely. We're going to have our first few offerings of water today as part of the service. And you'll notice as we go through the service, we have a couple of really special parts. Um, Dawn Schumann, the daughter of Judy Schumann, is here with us today. And so we've integrated a remembrance that is for Judy, but for others as well that we may be thinking about in this season as part of our service and in the way that we're collecting the water. Are there any other announcements for the life of the community or the church that I didn't share? Would you mention the special offering, please? Yes. So again, um, we have they call it a five by five offering. They're rainbow colored offering envelopes. They have little different little boxes of different colors. They're either in the front of the sanctuary, you know, like by the front doors, or they're in the pews. Or if you're making an offering online and you want to, if there's a way to do it in the subject line, five by five, you can say that. It supports the different ministries of the larger denomination worldwide. Some of them are directed towards local things like response to emergencies. Some of them go to specific um, causes. And off the top of my head, I don't remember them, but they're on the envelope. And we will include them in the emails that we're sending out this month. I think Joanne already did so once, but anyway, OK. So I think we can begin. And we're going to start with music. We're going to ask Alan to play us in.
Island. Then I'm going to invite you to turn to the call to worship, which you can find in your bulletin, or you'll find up on the screen. And Alan, what uh, the feedback I've been getting for our music is go really lightly underneath, and it works beautifully. You'll notice that this is uh, adapted from Deuteronomy, and I bet you'll see a common theme in the reading. May the Lord bless this land. With the best the sun brings forth, and the finest the moon can yield. With the best gifts of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of God who dwelt in the burning bush. Quick question, can somebody, I'm going to say somebody in Zoom, can somebody in Zoom tell me what the reference would be to God who shows up in the burning bush? It may seem obvious to you, but we have people in the church who may not know. Um, I, did I say Zoom? I think I said Zoom. Is there anybody in Zoom who who's, can think of where God would show up in a burning bush? Sorry to put you on the spot. To Moses? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I know it seems obvious, but what we're doing in the next few weeks is we are taking the fundamental stories of the Bible and we are tracing them through the scriptures because what happens is this, the first stories we read are then repeated or referred to over and over and over again. So the initial imagery of things like the creation stories and the, the stories of Genesis and then the story of Exodus where Moses is called to become a prophet and then leads the people of Israel out of Egypt, become the reference point for many of the stories that are told and reframed even in the gospel. This was a text that Jesus used that he was raised on and that those that followed him and wrote later on continue to refer to and connect. So our stories right up through the ritual of baptism begin with our earliest stories. So when you see in Deuteronomy that they refer backwards to Moses and the burning bush, it's just one tiny example. And you're going to hear in the readings that we share today, the common threads that are being cycled through again and again to reinforce these journeys and relationships. This is the time for the prayers of our community. We begin with prayers of concern. And then we turn to prayers of celebration. First, I need to check. Yes, we have the uh, microphone here. So I'm going to start us in Zoom so that one of our deacons can grab the microphone for when we get to the sanctuary. Does anybody in Zoom have a prayer concern that you'd like to raise up? If so, please unmute and go ahead and uh, share it with us out loud. Yep, I do. I would just like prayers. I'm not going to say a name, but I have a very uh, good um, friends of mine who are um, had to are dealing with mental health issues with their daughter unexpectedly, um, but they are taking the proper steps and the daughter is home, but continued prayers for them and support to go on this healing journey uh, as a family. So for friends of Sandy's whose daughter is experiencing mental health challenges and for their ongoing journey um, that they may be guided and find the resources that they need. And thank you, Sandy, because that certainly touches on a whole population within this community right here in the Valley and in Zoom. And many of us know somebody who's struggling with depression or anxiety or even suicidality or altered cognition of some type. There's mental health, mental illness, and there's changes in the way the brain is working. There's a lot of variations, but many of them come with emotional, psychological challenges as part of the journey. So for all those who have been particularly challenged in this way, and for those who love them and uphold them, and again, that people who are struggling will find companions on the journey resources, and also 
connection within that is healing. Other prayers of concern in Zoom. Go ahead, Judy. Uh, yes, um, uh, Evelyn Bailey passed this week and I'd like prayers for her family and Alan Hayes. For, the, for Alan Hayes? Ellen, Ellen Hayes, but but her sister, her twin sister, Evelyn Bailey, passed this week. Oh, okay, so Evelyn died this week. That's a that's a huge loss for the community, and for mm -hmm. Ellen, of course. Ellen is the organist and choir director in Bartlett. Um, is well known to many members of this community, and her twin sister died this week. And Ellen is a really faithful presence in that church and in that community, and you know, prayers of support um, and for comfort and peace for her and that she experienced dignity in her passing. Thank you, Judy. The prayers of concern in Zoom. Then uh, if there are prayers of concern here in the congregation that you want to say out loud, if you would raise your hand. <laughs> there we got. Two, two different hands and two sides of the sanctuary. So we're going to start with Kevin and then we'll move to Tom. Hello. Hi, Hi <laughs> Kevin. Go ahead. Um, prayer for uh, Ben, Elizabeth, Donna, um, Emily, and there was someone else I can't remember. But uh, also prayer for the president, the vice president, the first responders, the military, um, prayer for the poor and the homeless, and prayer for um, those suffering with PTSD and trauma. Thank you, Kevin. Very meaningful prayer. Um, right, okay. Sue, and then talk. prayers for um, my friend Alice, who is just diagnosed with serious illness. So please keep her in your prayers. Thank you. For Alice living with serious illness. And Tom has a prayer for us. Bear with us. This is the embodied part of the service where somebody has to walk the distance to get the microphone to people. My brother asked if we would in prayer Miriam, his daughter-in-law, who's facing surgery this week. Um, she's been told that it's not cancerous, but she's very, very anxious, and so certainly deserves our prayers on all accounts. So for basically your niece-in-law, yes. um, Miriam, who is facing surgery this week, that she may find peace, that she will receive healing, that those who are caring for her will be guided and, you know, give her the, the type of treatment she needs and that those around her will be able to support her in finding calm and peace and centeredness when she faces a health challenge. Other prayers of concern here in the church, in the sanctuary. Let's also lift up uh, those names that we regularly hold in prayer, Scamp, Huntley, Mary and Sasha, Jan and Barry, Richard, John, Nancy. Then we balance out these prayers with prayers of joy, celebration, gratitude, the things that give us light and hope. Um, Kevin is always hopeful, so Kevin's going to go ahead. <laughs> They're just things I have to say. Um, it's better to be rebuked by wise people than to listen to the songs of fools. Um, also, I wanted to say, uh, um, no, I think that's all I want to say. Kevin, thank you. Prayers of um, gratitude or celebration here in the church. Anybody have, oh, Alan's got a happiness. 
of some kind. And it looks like Kala has one. So we'll do Alan and then we'll do Kala. Um, I, I'd like to uh, say that um, at Our Lady of the Mountains, we recently had a women's retreat. Uh, we had 50 women come, um, and, which was many more than we expected. So we're very, <laughs> very happy about that. So That's I just great. wanted to celebrate that. That's great. And then Kala has something to share with us. The leaves changing. The leaves changing. Okay. What's your favorite color of all the leaves? Is that even a fair question? Orange. Orange. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of nodding in Zoom, and there's some consensus here in the sanctuary, too. That's a, an excellent thing to be thankful for. In Zoom, any gratitude celebrations that you wish to share? I have uh, gratitude, as always, to be spending um, time with my family. We attended a, a, a Zoom, I'm sorry, a stomp. Um, performance yesterday, uh, and it was uh, really cool to have the gift of sight and hearing to enjoy that with family. Nice. Family all around. Judy, what's your prayer? Yes, this is to Deanna and Kevin's first anniversary today. So they've been I, married one year. I was thinking that. I was Chris and I were driving down by Moultonboro yesterday, and I thought just last year I got to officiate at their wedding with kind of a lot of wind and just a, a breakthrough of the sun just in time for the wedding outside because every it was COVID, but people gathered outside masked in, in little pods and we had sunshine and lovely, yes. lovely day. So <laughs> congratulations to Deanna. Go ahead, Jan. Oh, good, Jan. Go for it. Yes, I just want to uh, just we're celebrating that Barry uh, played golf four times last week and he shot on Monday, he shot 118 and had a birdie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. And so, again, just to put this in context, would you like to explain what that means? Oh, oh for golfers? <laughs> no, uh, well, or, for golfers oh, what about Barry? His, Barry his challenge. Barry's paralyzed from the chest down. Uh, so he has to play one handed. He's a special golf cart called his paragolfer that allows him to stand up and hit the ball, but he has to play one handed. So he's really learning how to play again. Um, he was a good golfer before. But anyway, those, so those are really exciting moments for us. And they put a little bit of normalcy in our um in our life whereas one of my friends in our support group says uh, the narrative of our life changed very quickly yes. <laughs> in february 2020 but uh some of it's getting back to normal so thank you and thank you all for your prayers i really appreciate it uh every sunday um jan and barry were living up here and they returned to their primary address on the Cape. And um, that's where they're residing at this time. So Zoom is one of those ways that we're able to connect with people whose lives were disrupted by things that who could have imagined. Um, but that's a great prayer, Jan. Uh, four games of golf, 118, and a birdie or something like that. I heard. Yeah, okay. Pretty great, especially when you know the context. Other prayers of celebration. All right, who's happy for, uh, well, I guess autumn really covers everything, right? We've already had the fair food and all that kind of stuff, so yay. I'm going to ask for a moment of silence, and then I'll, I'll do a pastoral prayer, then we'll go into the Lord's Prayer. Please pray with me. Oh, holy God, you are the light. You are the changing of the world. You are the water and the breath and the wind and the land itself. Rather, you are the one who created all these parts of the home on which we sail through the universe, through the cosmos. We are reminded that we are literally on an ark. This creation is the only ark we have. 
and it sails the waters of the world and the universe you created. You have called us for so long into a covenant of stewardship and caregiving that those who survive the turmoil and the turbulence, those who are in this world with us now are our kindred and are your children, and we are bound together. May we cross the waters of life's challenges and find when we come to the far shore that we have discovered love along the way and that you have been with us all the way and that you are there on the far shore as well to greet us with love. We hold up the names that were raised out loud today. We hold up the lives and the places that we cannot see or that we did not name out loud. Places like Zimbabwe, which is our partner nation, Honduras, where members of our church have gone and ministered, the places that our children and our grandchildren and our families have planted and rooted themselves, where they are finding your presence or becoming an ambassador of your presence in their part of the world. We ask that your love will be there too. And this morning we pray together, as you first taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today is not the only day that we will have times to remember people that have moved beyond us. Throughout November, we will return to the ritual of Novembering, which means that during the course of November, you will be invited to either bring in a memento or hang someone's name on the tree of remembrance that we will have available. But today, because Dawn could be with us, and because throughout this time of COVID and this time of separation and reuniting, we have had departures and losses, we want to take a moment and share the litany of remembrance. And before we do that, I'm going to ask Dawn to come forward and just say, well, actually, Tish, if you want to take the um, microphone to Dawn, that would probably be the smartest thing. Um, Dawn is here in the sanctuary with us, and she just wants to say a few words to the congregation, both those in Zoom and those who can be here in person. Go ahead. Um, is it on? Is it on? Okay, okay, just hold it close so they can hear you. All right. Um, first of all, I'm happy to be here, and I'm really thankful that Gail allowed this time for me. Um, so I just want to say, say a few words just about mom. Uh, she loved this place and loved coming here in this community. Um, she actually, I hope I make it through. <laughs> um, she passed just six months ago. She had come to be with me in New Jersey uh, where she sold her home. And not too long after that, she we found out some medical challenges that she had. But nonetheless, being my mom, she was brave and she did, she did everything to keep going and to stay positive and constantly apologized to me for the trouble. And I would say, mom, no trouble. I was very thankful to have um, these couple of years for, with her, just me and her. We had them before I was living with her in New here in New Hampshire for a little while. Um, I just, again, want to thank this community. She loved the singing. She loved the weather. She loved her good friends. Um, having tea, going to lunch. And um, I just want to thank everybody and Gail for being so good to her and welcoming her and my dad here. And, um, thank you, Dawn. Thank you. 
today as we, you know, later we'll be collecting water and Dawn is one of the people that will be sharing water that was special to her mom. This is a reminder that our stories flow together. Just as the stories of the Bible touch each other, just as images cross across cultures and the symbolism can remain intact or it may change over time, but our stories touch each other and they may change in the telling or how someone else carries the story and remembers it. But stories are living and our tradition is built on the great flow of stories handed down one generation to another, first orally, then written down over thousands of years. And even the rituals that we have now come from those stories. Judy Schumann and her daughter Dawn, as so many others are, part of the stories of this community. And you are woven into the fabric of who we are. You'll find either on your screen or you'll find in the bulletin, the Liturgy for Remembrance. It's a very, very simple call and response where it says refrain on the screen. You're going to simply say out loud, we remember them. And I'm going to ask everyone to unmute for this call and response. And let us begin. In the rising of the sun and in its going down. We remember. In the blowing of the wind and the chill of the wind. You guys are the refrain. I'm the I'm the other part. In the blowing of the wind, say we remember and them. in the chill of winter, we, we remember, them. remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember, we remember them. them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we, we remember, remember them. them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we, we remember, remember them. them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we, we remember, remember, remember them. them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we, we remember, remember them. them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we, we remember, remember them. them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember, we remember, them. remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember, we remember them. them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we, we remember, remember them. them. For as long as we live, they too will live, for they now are part of us as we remember, we remember, we remember them. them. As I say that traditions touch each other. This, is t this uh, tradition of remembrance comes from a Jewish liturgy. And now, hopefully I didn't do things out of order. I don't think I did. We're going to stand and sing. Is that right? Yes. Yay. So far I'm in keeping everything in order. We're going to sing Morning Has Broken, which is one of Judy Schumann's favorite songs. So we're singing it in part in honor of Don and Judy being with us today. Please rise if you're able. Uh, you'll find the words on your screen or you'll find them on page 258 in the red hymnal. And Alan, um, if you can just cue us, that would be awesome.
going to invite Kala and Evie along with Tish to come forward. Kala and Evie are part of the gathering of our young people. Uh, it's going to be sporadic. Different people can come on different Sundays, but who are studying along with the adults the stories that bring us to the point of baptism in three weeks. And so Kala and Evie are going to read uh, paragraphs from one of the stories that they read this morning, and then Tish will follow up with some of the other stories. I ask you to listen for the themes of what you see and hear in relationship to water. So let's see if we can, uh, you know. Evie? Evie. In the beginning, when, dog, when God created the, the heavens and the earth, the earth was, was a formless void, and the darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in, into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Thank you so much. You, you guys can sit down if you want and then Tish will keep reading. Genesis 7, 11, 18, 19, 8, verses 1, and 9, verses 15. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again would the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Exodus 14, 21 to 22. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Exodus 17, verse 6. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 9. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks and streams and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. Joshua 3, verses 12 to 13 and 15 to 17. Now then, choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carry the ark reach the Jordan and their feet touch the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap of great distance away, so the people crossed over. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Two kings, 2, verse 1, 7 and 8, 11, 13 and 14. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. 
the water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on high ground. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. So I know that's a lot of story, but we're going to have a conversation this morning about the theme that we hear running through these stories. And so first I'm going to ask that you will pray with me. O holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So the great thing is, first of all, some of the adults in the community studied about this on Friday, and we read all these stories. And then this morning, Kala and Evie were here. They brought donuts, by the way, they, um, which it wasn't a bribe, but boy, was it yummy. Um, and we started to talk about some of these same stories. We, as the girls read to you, talked about the story of creation and how God's presence moved over the waters before they were even water. This is a description of the authors of the Bible about how they imagined, how they tried to describe the world before the world was. What some people think of as the big bang like that moment of creation what was it like before there was anything that we can imagine this is how the authors described it as god's presence the wind the breath of god the word moving over the dark waters and then later the waters become the waters as we might know them the seas separated into land and sea and then we started talking about the ark. We talked about Jonah, which wasn't even in this set of readings, but it's another incident of people trying to cross water. And we talked about, well, we introduced the idea of Moses, which you guys got to hear a little bit about. And then you hear the patterns of Moses being repeated. But what I want to ask of everybody is what type of relationship you are hearing largely through these stories about people with water. On Friday, when we talked about it, people started remembering their own experiences about water as a potentially dangerous element. And so I'm inviting you guys to think about a time in your life when water wasn't your friend, when something scary happened in connection with water, most of us probably have some type of a personal story. Kala and Evie talked about their canoe tipping over in a set of cascades and that that was scary. Other people had other types of stories. Some people have been in the presence of hurricanes and floods or people have fallen into a body of water and felt like they were drowning or were at risk of drowning until someone else pulled them out. Po Jen, I believe, talked about falling through the ice. Water in these early stories is a very dangerous, chaotic element. And yet the presence of God has power over it to influence it. God shapes it. And you'll, if you guys look through the scriptures, if you read about Moses and the parting of the Red Sea, notice the presence of the east wind. Notice again and again the presence of wind or the word directing the water and moving the water. 
Or God says, I give you, I grant to you the power with your body to somebody like Moses or to Elijah and Elisha to have power over the water. And in all these cases, the water parts. The water makes way so that people can pass safely through to something desirable. We use the metaphor of journey as if we're moving from a departure point to a destination point. In the case of the people leaving Egypt, moving into the promised land, but it takes them 40 years to get there, right? It's a long journey. And yet in this reading from Joshua, we see that they're finally, 40 years later, after they've made the safe departure from Egypt, having the safe crossing into what is called the promised land. And it's a reflection even of the Garden of Eden. Again, the echoes that are repeated down through these stories. Evie reminded us that if you were on the ark for about half a year, not all the water could be unfriendly because we also know that we need water to live. Clearly, there was some drinking water on the ark, which means there was good water, fresh water, good, we were talking about being a loaded word. I don't want to say good water and bad water. I want to say fresh water that is life-giving and water that in and of itself was a dangerous element in the, in the way it was used in this story. Always there was the presence of water that could be used to sustain life alongside the dangerous elements. There's one tiny line in all the scriptures that we shared this morning where it says, extend your hand to the rock and water will come forth. That's Moses in the desert when the people are desperate for water and Moses turns to God and God creates a spring in the desert so that water is suddenly available. But there are stories of the rivers flowing out of the Garden of Eden, just as there are stories at the very end of the Bible in the book of Revelation that talk about the river that will flow through the new Jerusalem to grow the trees that are healing to all nations. Water is a thread that runs through the Bible all the way through it from the Hebrew scriptures until the stories that are woven around the life of Christ and the life of his followers. We will be following these stories until they lead us to the story of baptism in two weeks and how it becomes a ritual in our church and what it means and how we can take water that was scary and dangerous and threatening that ripped across the earth and took away most of life and how it becomes an element that is holy into which we want to sink and immerse ourselves or have sprinkled on our forehead. And we seek it out as an element, as a symbol of belonging and healing and connection. How does that transformation take place? It begins in the life of Christ, but it is tied to these stories and how God takes what is dangerous and with God's presence. And when people from the community set foot into those dangerous places, with the presence of community, in connection and in partnership to holy love, people make the journey from dangerous places to thresholds of transformation, safety, renewal. If you had an experience of being in danger in the presence of water, you must also have the experience of what it felt like to be safe again. Can you remember the moment after the scare, the fright, the almost death that you may have experienced 
or at least the surprise and the startlement? What did it feel like to be rescued or to be safe? And that's a real question. Kala and Evie, did, what were, how did you guys feel after you were safe from the canoe tipping over? They're thinking. You felt relieved. And your dad was giving you some directions, right? He was telling you what to do so that you, you and you had like your safety vests on. So there were things that were around you that were going to keep you safe, but there's still that moment when you realize you're safe. How about other people um, in Zoom or in the sanctuary? Do you want to grab the microphone again, Tish? I, I, this is a conversation. I really want to hear from you about how you felt. We're trying to make these stories real for our young people and to connect ourselves so that in two weeks when we pray over the water, we understand why these stories are important, why they've been handed down. Is there anybody here? who can say how, Kevin can say how he felt after he came out of the water. You want me to say like what I said at Bible study, I, but not whatever, the whole story? Whatever, what, no, just, just how you felt when you came out of the water, Kevin. Well, when my mother saved me, she put me in the bathtub because I had 104 temperature. And when I came out, I felt grateful I guess for the water, I don't remember it was so long ago as a child, but I'm more so grateful to God and my mother. And um, also there was another time where I was really sick and um, I felt like I was losing my vision. And God told me to put water over my face, so I did. And then I felt better instantly, so I was grateful to God and the water. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Anybody else here in the sanctuary that's willing to share? Just like Meg. Meg has a sharing. Um, I can remember um, several years ago, we were in a beautiful sunny day in Hawaii and playing in the waves and doing a little bit of, you know, sort of body surfing. And all of a sudden, I was completely caught up in the rush, and the waves were just tumbling over me. And I can still see in my mind what it looked like underwater, um, seeing the sand and the waves and all that, and being terribly frightened. But when I finally got on shore, yes, I was extremely grateful, happy. Um, but yeah, I can still see that water coming over me and grabbing me and not letting me get up. Thank but. you. <laughs> How about in Zoom? Is there anybody that had an experience with water that you remember and how you felt afterwards? Anybody talking about there? Okay, Zoom's being quiet. So we'll call that a wrap then. Thank you for those who shared. That's a little bit of some, some of what we do on Friday night and it's what we did this morning together um, when we were looking at the scripture we're trying to bring these stories to life and we're bringing them from thousands of years ago into our present day and our present context. And this morning, we're also sharing water that has come from people's stories and their lives and making it part of the baptismal waters that we will be blessing as holy water and using in baptism in a couple of weeks. And so for this moment, I'm going to invite Dawn to come forward with water, right? You have water. And uh, Kala and Evie have water. And we're just going to pour it in the baptismal font. Um, there's a camera focused on the baptismal font, which I'm going to open up. And so you guys can just pour this right in. story of this water I was at the beach in New Jersey one of my favorite places to go on a very stormy day 
knowing that this ritual was happening, I happened to come across a gentleman who had a dog. We started talking. I told him while I was there, why I was there. It was a really stormy day, and I ran down to the beach. I'm like, how am I ever going to get this water in here? So we had struck up a great conversation. I told him about my mom, the whole story, and uh, this gentleman said, I'll go get it for you. I said, are you sure? He took his dog down there. He probably got knee deep in water and came back, and he happened to be of the Jewish faith. And it was very um, touching. He was originally from Israel and had lived in uh, Argentina. Fascinating person. Anyway, um, I was thrilled. So this water was, uh, he left and he said, so good to talk to you. He goes, remember, you got this from a Jewish man, and which was uh, wonderful. So this is uh, the story of the water that I brought today. Jackson Falls. Yeah. So we've got some water from the Atlantic Ocean from the beach in New Jersey, which Dawn collected because that was an important place. Thank you so much. And the girls this morning went up to Jackson Falls and collected water from the Wildcat River. So we have water from two places right now in our baptismal font. And what Dawn was saying is that she needed some help to get the water and a gentleman volunteered to go down to the shore and get it for her. And he just happened to be a Jewish man from Israel who volunteered to go down and get the water. And he told her to remember that she received the water from a Jewish man from Israel. So that's pretty apropos to the beginning of our collecting of water as a community. She just happened to find this gentleman there on the beach who helped her. We're going to let this be our meditation, the sharing of waters, the gathering of waters from our lives, the recollection that this water indeed is pulled up into the sky, it's rained down on the earth, it is gathered, it has different shapes and forms, but it has flowed down through centuries. And your water touches my water and our waters together mingled become the water that will be used in our baptisms in this place and time in two weeks. As will your stories. When you hear the prayer in two weeks and you hear the children pouring water every time they hear the word water and Cal accounted 14 times that you hear the word water in the prayer of baptism. Pay attention to the story in a new and a different way. It is your story, and the water is your water. It is the water of life. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for your offering. We give thanks for the many ways that you have given your offering, whether you do the five by five on the envelope, whether you do jxncc.org, your contributions, your presence, your steadfast faith in the way that you have given to this church, even through the pandemic, have helped us to remain vital and healthy and an active part of the work of love and service here in the Valley and all over the world. And I think many of you have stories of your own about how this church has shown up in the lives of your neighbors, your friends, or yourself. But your support makes that possible. Let us sing the doxology together. You'll find it either in the bulletin or on the screen. standing we're going to now sing michael row your boat ashore that's a good lively song it's all about water and susan might kind of cue us a little bit if you don't mind would you be okay? just cueing not okay <laughs> the two of you together i bet i have confidence
All right. <laughs> They're breathing, breathing heavy. <laughs> All right, now we're going to sing the benediction. You can stay standing if you want. What's that? <laughs> right, it was a motorized rowboat, according to the people here in the sanctuary. <laughs> Everybody, remember to gather up the waters of your life and maybe bring a few drops of them here. May peace flow through your life with abundance and joy. Go in peace.